Good day fellow investors, welcome to the stock market news with a long-term fundamental twist. Today we're going to discuss earnings as it was a big earnings week and then next week I'll discuss in the next news about the Fed's pause, about the economics, about the recession, everything that might happen. So let's focus on earnings because there is so much to learn from the current earnings as I said it was a big week. First, I'm going to discuss Caterpillar, how it is a cyclical stock. Then I'm going to discuss Facebook and how there is a big difference between the business reality and media hysteria that usually is made to pump up clicks and views and reading and everything. So that's something crucial to understand when, when investing. Then Alibaba came out with great earnings despite the things negative going in China. So that's also something to understand the power of technology that confronts economic slowliness, sluggishness or whatever. So that's another big difference. Then we have to discuss declining sales with Apple, but increasing earnings, which is something very interesting and which is probably the reason why people are invested in Apple. Then something to learn where we can learn a lot is Nvidia because there the story is great, but it is a lot about timing. And then I'm going to finish by telling you that I'm actually bullish on Tesla and that will might be a surprise to you and then we're going to discuss how am I investing into that bullishness. So let's immediately start with Caterpillar. Caterpillar is a stock that is a cyclical stock. So it depends really on the economy, on the price of commodities, on how much is invested in China in the development of emerging markets, etc. And that is reflected in the stock price. If we look at the long-term chart for Caterpillar, in 2009 we had a huge decline, a huge run-up prior to that. 2015, again, there were big worries about slowdown in China, commodities recession, overinvestment that really pushed the stock price down. That didn't materialize, the stock price exploded and now it's slowly again declining because there are uncertainties about the future, what will happen, economic slowdown, Dalio and Klarman have been saying that 2020 will be the recession or at least a global slowdown, which is not good for Caterpillar. And that has been reflected over the last year, stocks are down 20% since the peak in 2018, so downward pressure is there. However, financial results are great. Profits per share have been growing over 2018 significantly. Revenue is up, everything is good. Financial results really good. Adjusted profit per share doubled from 6 to almost 12. No, not really doubled, but almost there. So really a big, big positive. And then if you look at what will happen, another positive, Earnings are expected to be even higher in 2019. So higher earnings, why isn't the stock price going up? Investors fear ma margin contraction on lower sales or lower potential sales in 2020 already. And that is why the stock price is under pressure now. Lower margins, lower sales will lead to perhaps even negative earnings or very low earnings which then don't justify the current market capitalization. If we take a look at the earnings row, then earnings have been very high in 2008, about $5 per share, then down to one in 2009, up to seven, eight in 2011, 12, then again down to negative in 2016 and extremely positive in 2018 and expected to be so in 2019. The key is that it is unlikely that those earnings will be sustained because Chinese sales of excavators have been declining for a while, so that will put pressure in 2019, 2020, and with everybody expecting a slowdown in China, crisis, debt, growth rate slowing down, it means that also Caterpillar and other stocks will be hit, especially their margins. That will impact investors. So if you're an investor looking at such stocks, such cyclical stocks, you have to find the long-term trend. If you look at the long-term trend, it's actually positive for Caterpillar. So you have to find, okay, when is the stock overpriced above the trend and then when it is below the trend? Because as the, it's normal market behavior, as things go well, everybody's overexcited. As things don't go that well, 
everybody is extremely pessimistic. So you have to find an average earnings for the company for the last past years, let's say it was $5, which means that a margin of safety price would be, I don't know, 60 for a company like Caterpillar. If earnings will be on average seven with the ups and downs, then we are already at 90. But the last run up is a little bit overexcited given what can happen to the earnings. Now on Facebook, it is a company that I'm covering on my stock market research platform. I have it in one of my portfolios and it is extremely important here to understand the difference between business reality and what the media is saying, what the media is selling, because the media is selling to get more views, more clicks, not to discuss business reality. Business reality is boring, it doesn't sell. And that difference is something one can really take advantage of when investing in stocks, as I did with Facebook. So the first time I bought Facebook was in August at $174. I was investing in the business. So actually I always tell people if the stock price drops and you are investing in the business, not hoping to make money on trading, speculating, then you are happy when it drops because you can buy more when it drops. And that's exactly what I did. I bought, bought more at 136 and now I think I'm already in positive territory. I wish I wished for it to go to 100 to buy more, but my wishes weren't fulfilled. And this is the most important difference when investing in businesses. You look at the business reality, you look at the growth, you look at the earnings, you look at the strength, the moat, what's going on, and then you compare it to the price. If the price goes lower, you are so happy because you can buy more. Let's see what happened with Facebook and their earnings, the business reality. Revenues are up 30%. I'm happy with 15% growth uh, in my models. So that justifies the price. Net income is higher. Daily active users were up 9%. Monthly active users also. And the company estimates 2.7 billion people use the company's service family each month. Facebook, Insta, WhatsApp, Facebook messengers. So that's the key, that's the core of the business, no matter what happens with privacy issues, with the media, etc. People are still using it and average revenue per user is going up, is going constantly up. There is more competition for those ads and that is likely to go up even further, pushing earnings higher, growth of 15% with earnings growing. That's a good com combination. When we look at the conference call, what did the management say? They are going to roll out payments on WhatsApp. They expect pay Facebook Watch to become more mainstream. Didn't gain, gain traction for now, but you never know. Instagram, shopping, commerce, Oculus Quest will be the first product shipped. Probably nothing material for now, but it is an interesting start. So there is a lot of optionality for growth. The risks are always there, a recession would push earnings down, would change the earnings model, would put pressure on the stock price. And then as a business investor, I would simply buy more if the long-term fundamentals, the stickiness is still there. So that's something to understand, to take advantage of the market when it gives you an opportunity based on its short-term myopic uh, outlook. Yes, Facebook, Facebook's margins have been hit due to uh, privacy issues due to increased investing in safety and everything, but that strengthens its moat because other competitors will not be having the money to do the same. Alibaba is very interesting. We have had 20 Chinese companies coming out with earnings warnings where earnings would lag expectations, but Baba did beat expectations. 40% growth, uh, huge cash flow, 84% year on year growth in cloud computing. However, I don't know with Baba is that the core business looks good, but all these new initiatives grow fast. So they add on growth, but they don't make that much money yet. Whether they will make money or not depends on how the Chinese economy goes, how things go. So cloud computing will probably do good because of the savings that it brings to companies. But let's say I still haven't figured it out whether the growth will continue at 40%. It is possible that it will be a story like Amazon, where despite the financial crisis of 2009, the European crisis 2012, the slowdown, the everything, Amazon just kept on growing. It might be the case for Baba that it does the same for the next decade 
it might not. That's simply a risk I'm not willing yet to take or I simply don't understand. So I cover the stock, it is on my watch list and I simply ad adjourn my knowledge as things go. If BABA really becomes what it is supposed to become, what it might become, then if I invest now or in 2022, the difference won't be that material on my long-term investment track record. On Apple, we have lower iPhone sales, but we have growing ser service sales that the management is pushing. However, even that is slowing down. So we have slowing growth in services, slowing growth logically in iPhones. And that's something negative. That's something investors don't really like. However, you have to look at this from an investing point of view. What will be the earnings, the cash flows for investors to the owners in relation to the market cap? So revenue declined 15% from the prior year. However, they generated very strong operating cash flows of 26 billion during the December quarter. And they are returning that to investors. And there is 140 billion dollars in cash to be returned to investors. When I sum all those things up, the market cap is 781 billion, 130 billion off. We are, because that will be a return, we are at 65, 650. So the past 12 months cash flows were 62 billion. So that's a cash flow return of around uh, 9, 8, 9%. And that's exactly what Buffett is targeting. He is happy in this low interest rate environment to get a return of six, seven, eight, nine percent up in the upper, higher in the upper cycle of the iPhone product cycle, lower when things are not that positive as those are now. And the people are there, the buyers are there, the stickiness is still there, and they will make 60 billion, 40 billion, 50 billion over the next few years. And that's exactly what Buffett bought. If there is upside from something new, perfect. If not, also good. That's the key thing to understand here. Nvidia was hardly hit after the news came out, lower guidance. Uh, and the stock is also hardly hit over the past years, down 40%, 50% in the last few quarters, 52. So that's a big hit for such a company. However, if we look at the story, even the management is positive. They say the foundation of our business is strong and more evident than ever. The accelerated computing model Nvidia pioneered is the best path forward to serve the world's insatiable computing needs. The markets we are creating, gaming, design, HPC, artificial intelligence and autonomous vehicles are important, growing and will be very large. We have excellent strategic positions in all of them. And I completely agree with them. However, with such a good long-term story for the future, timing is crucial. And this is where things uh, change all the time. If you plan that artificial intelligence, uh, autonomous driving explodes in 2022, but then it happens in 2025, that's a huge difference for such an investment. So that's the key with Nvidia is, okay, it's positioned well strategically. Okay, the key is timing. 2000 dot com bubble, everybody was extremely excited about the internet, that the internet will take over the world. It did, but, not then, it took a little bit, took 10, 15 years for Amazon to become what it was supposed to become then. In the meantime, a lot of companies go bust, a lot of things change, which is again the business reality compared to the positive long-term growth story. And this is something one should be very careful about. If we look at Nvidia's fundamentals, we can see that revenue is about 12 billion, 12.5 billion dollars on a market cap of 90 billion, that was 180 billion on the peak just a few months ago, that is what I call risky. Free cash flow per share is 3.3 billion. It will be lower as the revenue guidance has been cut. So we are paying 90 billion for 3 billion. That's what price to cash flow of 30, which might be lower. So it is extremely stretched as price to sales is what seven, eight. And that's very, very big. And that's a big risk because when are those revenues going to explode? What will be the competition? What will be the timing? That's the biggest risk. And therefore it is an unknown and you have to 
implement the timing factor when you are investing in that, which will help you think about the portfolio exposure if you want to be exposed to such a stock. Now, another similar stock with a lot of timing issues is Tesla. And Tesla has shown good results. We see EV sales in the US exploding thanks to Tesla, really doing good with the Model 3, everything is bullish, plus energy storage deployed is expected, has exploded in 2018 and expect, expected to grow even more in 2019. And I'm really bullish on Tesla, I really want it to succeed. I come from the same core country. Nikola Tesla comes from Croatia, so of course I wish for Tesla to succeed and really develop on its plans. They made what, quarter million cars this year, they plan to make more than a half a million next year, then bring it to 700,000, a million cars over the next few years. And if that happens, that will be very positive for the company, of course. So I really hope they make it and I really hope the EV trend develops and grows and I'm very bullish on that. However, I'm not investing in Tesla and now I'll explain to you why not. It's simply because the risk is too high. The last quarter, which was a good quarter with pushbacks sales to get the federal tax contributions that expired the, the 1st of January, show how things actually work. The net margin before non-controlling interests is 3.5%, which is an okay net margin for a car company. The sales from other services are still, let's say, low compared to the car company. And if they grow to 500,000 to a million cars over the long term, I quadruple the current sales, so six, seven billion. So let's say they come to 30 billion in 2021, 2022. And on 30 billion with, let's say, a 5% net margin, I come to a net profit of 1.5 billion. For such a long-term net profit, a market cap of 52 billion for 2021, 2022 with high expected investments is something simply too risky for me. If a recession comes down, slow down, car sales go down, then something else that represents a risk with Tesla, it's debt is something that might fire back. So the risk reward is simply not attractive for me. Total liability is 23 billion on just 5 billion of stockholders equity is something that I'm not that attracted and simply too much risk. I hope Tesla wins the game, hope Tesla manages to do everything, but for investing, it's a high risk, let's say questionable reward story. That's it, whatever happens, we will see, not even Elon Musk knows what will happen. The story is good, let's see how the economy works, what are interest rates, etc. to see this story develop. Next week we'll discuss the macroeconomic uh, situation, the news, the Fed pause. Tomorrow I'll discuss a copper miner, as I'm bullish on Tesla, I'm investing in copper, in nickel. So you might see, okay, that's one option that I researched, so you, I want to share that. Then on Sunday we'll continue with the Buffett letters and Buffett investings criteria. Check my stock market research platform in the link below. There is a 28 money back guarantee so you can see everything that I do, my portfolios, how my mindset develops these things for free. If it's not resonating with you, simply ask your money back. If it is, if you're looking for diversification, for interesting global investment picks, then it might be something for you. Thank you, looking forward to your comments and I'll see you in the next video.